unexplainable, paranormal, conspiracy, and much more. Starring your host and co-host, Jenny Nicasio, Sean Kelly, Trish Lowe, and Jason Spencer and Ryan Petro. Brought to you by UPRN Network. Now for your host, Jenny Nicasio. Good evening and welcome to Chase and Prophecy on the UPRN FM 105.3 New Orleans Network, where we discuss anything and everything beyond the scope of normal. Remember to like us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and like us too. Oh, we have an interesting show tonight. Uh, Stan Gordon is back in the house. We're going to discuss odd incidents reported throughout the year with the surge of activity since October and into the new year, guys. So stay tuned later in the show. Also, we'll be discussing red chem trails that we didn't get to last week. Moundsville Penitentiary. We're going to talk about you on AL technology. And of course, Jason Prophecy off topics. So make sure you have your topics, guys. And you can post in the chat and comment and be involved in the conversation. Or you can call into the show at 985-747-3817. But first, we have a word from our sponsor. This segment is brought to you by my friends at Old Timey Crimey. Old Timey Crimey is an historical true crime podcast hosted by Chrissy and Amber. They have over 150 episodes ranging from infamous crimes like those of Jack the Ripper. They like to dig into the weird, wild with details and facts. What I like most about this show is their energy and humor while telling a good crime story. Like Chicago, 1933, a young man is kidnapped and his family will go to great lengths to get them back. And one of my favorites is when Chrissy tells Amber the story of Mary Avery, a little girl with the best nickname ever. Mary tore up the streets of San Francisco in the late 1800s. Or, Sean, this is one of your favorites, the great train robbery of 1915, mm -hmm. when three men try to pull off a daring train heist in West Virginia. One, <laughs> one last big haul and missed the mark by a lot. If you enjoyed our paranormal investigation showing the crime and the history of the hauntings, you're going to love old timey crimey. True crime is better in black and white with over 150 episodes full length to bonus mini episodes. There's plenty to binge on on a Saturday night. You can find a link on our social media platforms and a sample on our website. Old timey crimey where they know that the good old days weren't always good. Thanks, gals. Okay, so how are you guys doing tonight? We're hanging out. Happy in. Torture Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did everybody have a wonderful Valentine's Day? Yeah. What? Yes. What? Uh, I'm, I'm celebrating National Singles Awareness Day today. It's the Yeah, 15th. me too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know there was one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's today. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, everybody that's single, there you go. Huh, well, you yeah. know what? You know what was crazy this year? Now, I've been in the supermarket knee cutting business for 22 years. And every year at Valentine's Day, you have these young guys come up to me. And you can tell they're wanting to buy some meat in order to impress their girlfriends or their wives. And I give them the whole menu, you know. And, and it was like religiously, they do it every Valentine's Day. But here was the creepy thing this year. No one guy bought no food or meat in order to cook his girlfriend or his wife a meal this year. And it was kind of strange, you know. And my customers on Valentine's Day, they weren't happy people, you know what I mean? They were miserable. Oh, I'm like, damn, come well, on. There's a lot of miserable people out there, I guess, when they're single. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> but it's just like, honest to Pete, no one... No one took the time out. I mean, guys used to really, I mean, spend at least a half hour, 45 minutes just to pick out a single, you know, what to uh, cook for their girlfriends and shit. Nobody, 
I'm not too sure. I'm no. a down. What'd you do, Jason? I actually made a uh, nice steak dinner last night. Uh, we had some nice steaks and baked potatoes and fresh cut asparagus and cooked it all up. Wow, there you go. So when, uh, my wife got home from picking up the baby, dinner was ready. And it had some well, wine out. You the... <laughs> that was yeah. nice. She's a lucky one. It was pretty one, good. Huh? It was pretty good. Hell yeah. Heck Hell yeah. yeah. She's lucky. She's a good girl. I'm lucky. <laughs> There you are. Uh, Jenny just disappeared. Oh, she's gone. I guess that was oh. my Valentine's talk for her. Yeah. So, how you guys been? I mean, it's been a week. How'd your show go on Monday, Trish? Good, good. I I had flood from XV Planis on again. That um, we had him on our show back in January, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um. And it was fun. I, other than that, I worked all day. I, um, that's it. That was my Valentine's. I think, do you think it's a collective energy, like negative energy in the world because of everything going on right now? So it, it just, it spreads, you know? Right. No, I believe you, you know, but I'm going to tell you something interesting, a little bit off uh, the topic here, just a tad, maybe it's part of it, but I left work today at six o'clock and I looked up in the sky and there was a ton of chemtrails going on in the sky. Honest to God, yeah. there had to be about 14 to 15 of them in the sky. And I'm thinking, what the hell's going on here? It's a full moon. Yeah, that it's too. I said, well, our full moon here is like really, really bright. Really, yeah. really bright. Yeah. And that affects people's, it's a, I, it's in Leo today, but I believe yesterday was um, cancer, I think. And mm -hmm. so cancer brings a lot of um, emotions. Welcome back, people. Jenny. We're not talking about Valentine's Day. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for that, Trish. Yeah, I just got Stan on the phone. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce him. And just give me one second. Okay. So. We got our guest, Stan Gordon, back with us. Stan has been researching UFO sightings, bare Bigfoot encounters, and other mysterious events in Pennsylvania since 1959. Since then, he's been involved with the investigation of thousands of unusual events. He is the primary investigator of the 1965 UFO crash incidents that occurred in Kecksburg. Welcome back to Chasing Prophecy, Stan. Thanks for having me back on. Great. Hey, Stan. Stan the man. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> so, Stan, tell us what's going on. Well, it's uh, been a really interesting uh, last few years. Last year was uh, very, very active. Uh, we had multitudes of UFO sightings, uh, some Bigfoot activity, some other cryptid reports. Uh, we had reports every month uh, of the year, and uh, it was very, very fascinating. But what was really interesting, what has been very interesting as well, is that Normally, year after year, generally when fall and then winter comes in, reports generally begin to dwindle. But for whatever reason, October through December and now into the early 2022, it's been just steady reports. And, and a lot of very interesting UFO reports in the greater Pittsburgh area, not just lights in the sky, but we're getting reports of unusual objects seen at very low level, low to the ground in some cases, solid objects. Uh, we're having some other interesting things going on. So it's been very, very interesting. Stan, tell us about the pulsating um, UFO reports that you uh, have gotten. The odd incidents that, you re that were reported to. Wasn't there a video that you um, got? I think the one you showed, that was actually from one of my uh, research associates down in West Virginia who had... Uh, yeah, that's posted on there, and that just happened recently in West Virginia. And, and we were having some similar reports as well. But, uh, I mean, actually, you know, I'll tell you about a, a few of the cases. There, there are so many. We could spend probably a couple hours talking about some of the recent cases. But some uh, are kind of interesting. And what also we're receiving is some of these odd cloud-like objects that every once in a while over the years we, we receive these reports. And also we receive reports of unusual solid objects, even in daylight sometimes, entering clouds, but never exiting the clouds, where the cloud dissipates and the object's not there. But um, here was one interesting one happened um, 
October 24th last year. This was um, in the afternoon on Route 119 between Scottsdale and Mount Pleasant, and this fellow's riding down that road, that busy highway, and all of a sudden he notices uh, several cars in front, in front of him all hitting their brakes at the same time, and apparently they're watching what he's seeing. It, it was a cloudy and overcast at the time, and it was a lot of uh, gray clouds in the sky, but there was this one particular uh, round cloud was lighter in color than the other surrounding clouds. It was about as big as the school bus that looked in the sky. It wasn't that high off the ground, but it was making these erratic movements right and left, up and down, moving around in the sky. He said it was almost like um, a school of fish moving around, calling a lead fish. And um, he had to pass underneath, go under uh, one of the, the bypasses there. And when he came out, it was gone. And uh, we've had some other reports as well from other people reporting things like that. But some of the other reports we're getting are, are really intriguing. Uh, we've had a lot of reports in the last year of large uh, cigar-shaped objects, many daylight reports here in Pennsylvania. There have been some pictures taken. Um, we've had a, a, quite a number of triangular-shaped UFO reports coming in from different locations as well. Um, and then what's also fascinating, you know, for this is something a lot of people are not aware of, but it's happening more and more. And I started investigating back in the 1960s, but I call mini UFO reports. And they're very fascinating. These objects are not high in the sky, but what's so interesting is they're low to the ground. They sometimes approach people very closely. The smallest ones kind of look like, like oversized fireflies, lightning bugs, about an inch or two in diameter. Sometimes I've been told that when there's a group of moving around, they actually illuminate the surrounding area as they're moving. And um, but the majority of them are about one to two feet in diameter, some a little bigger, generally spherical, not always, but most times they're spherical, sometimes they're solid metallic looking. In other cases, they're just brilliant spheres of various luminous colors. And I've had many cases of these, these have been reported even in recent weeks, I've had reports or numerous reports last year, they go on year after year, but you don't hear a lot about it. I've had cases where they paced vehicles, I've had them enter people's homes and cars through open windows that sometimes go out through the window or right through the walls of the house. I've had them uh, reportedly appear in people's homes. And uh, these are fascinating. But what makes it even more interesting is, and this is something I was uh, investigating in those cases back in the 70s around here when we had that massive UFO Bigfoot wave in 73 to 74. Some of this was starting to turn up. But in more recent years here in Pennsylvania and around the country, in areas where you have a lot of history of Bigfoot encounters, researchers and other people are reporting seeing these these small spheres or orbs of light in the trees, low to the ground, sometimes approaching clo uh, closely. And so there seems to be some interaction between some of the Bigfoot phenomena and some of these strange light sources as well. So it's just one of, of many very unusual aspects of the Bigfoot mystery that I've been looking into in more recent years. Wow. What do you think about that? So, <clears throat> real quick, I want to ask you, uh, you mentioned 119. Uh, you said Scottsdale area, correct? Plus the Scottsdale, yes. Uh, I, the reason I was just asking is because uh, I drive a truck, and several times a week I'm on 119 multiple times a day uh, from, like, uh, Connellsville to Greensburg. So I go past the Scottsdale, and it's, it's ironic because I'm always, like, looking up at the sky because you can just see so much of it. You know, just like wondering if one day I'll see something. But now that you're saying that people are making claims to seeing something back in October, I'm definitely really going to keep my eyes open, you know, from now on when I go out there. Well, also, now you've got to remember that a, a lot of, even though we get sporadic reports from all different areas, there's probably not an area around we haven't had reports. And, and again, a lot of reports in the last year or so all through the greater Pittsburgh area, including some of the metropolitan areas as well, and populated areas. But historically, a lot of UFO activity and, and Bigfoot activity, in fact, occurs commonly along the areas on and along and bordering along the Chestnut Ridge. So now when you're getting out to those areas, you're getting into the, the Chestnut Ridge area, getting close. And um, that's very fascinating as well. So there have been actually sightings for years along Route 119. I mean, we've had some significant cases, uh, oh, geez, the past 20, 30 years all along that general area. 
And um, so that's very fascinating. And there have been many, many sightings down around Scottsdale, uh, from Connorsville, and then going up through uh, Fayette County. That's a very, very busy area. Um, there was another report here. I'm, I'm just trying to find. I've got a lot of files here. And th that report was interesting. I had just told you about. But, again, there were many, many more. And it was about a week or so later, as I recall, and uh, this would have been in an area uh, not too far from there. So over towards Norvelt, over more towards Mount Pleasant Township. Now this was about early November of last year now. So here's another man that evening is riding down a back road and he sees this very bright round light in the sky with a red tinge. Now this one was a little higher, but he estimated around 2,000 feet off the ground, which still wasn't that high. And he said, this thing was huge. He said it was as big as a house. And they watched for several minutes, but he was chasing it around as it was moving. And he was able to get a picture of it. And uh, it ended up being very close to that area that I just told you about off of 119, where um, that other person had reported that other incident as well. But there were many, many reports. Uh, we've had low-level reports of, of large triangular objects being seen, again, one, one case in Fayette County was very, very low off the ground. And, um, and, and something else is very, very fascinating among the reports. Um, I believe it was October last year. Um, I was talking to uh, Dan Hagman, the BORU group up in Butler County, and he had a report, and he's had a lot of sightings up there too in the last year in Butler County, by the way, which has always had a lot of history of incidents. I was up there in the 60s, uh, there were incidents going on. But um, anyhow, he, in October, he had a, a report of a Bigfoot sighting, and I believe he told me that within the hour, there were other people calling out about seeing this very large triangular object in the same area. And what was really fascinating was that he reported some of those people apparently who were in the vicinity of that object, that they felt like a static charge when they were close by. Well, that was fascinating because uh, later in November, uh, I received another report, and uh, this was uh, in Fayette County, also pretty close to the ridge. And this was um, on one of the, it was on Route 119, believe it or not, again, another part of 119. And uh, to make the story short, they're riding down the road, they see this object covering uh, off the side of the road, and as this person gets closer, this is kind of a described as like kind of a, a kind of a uh, rounded triangular object uh, and there were non-blinking orange and yellow lights on it they were about as big as a large dinner plate and this thing was hovering only about 30 feet off the ground and this person had to pass pretty close near it and got a very very good look at this thing but that person also uh, received a that person had a, a dog with him in the car and the dog was watching this thing and the person was petting the dog and also got a, a static charge, which again, these, you know, you've got a lot of electromagnetic effects over the years with UFOs where you have power loss or the headlights go dim, the object moves away, the power comes back on, but this is a little different. And then to make it even more intriguing, uh, one of my research associates is investigating another case down in Fayette County, and it just happened uh, let me see, this just happened the second week of January of this year. And it was fascinating, too, because here's this object, very early morning hours, this person goes outside and sees this unusual-looking object hovering, and she runs into her house to grab a camera, and when she touches the door handle, she gets a static charge. And when she goes back out, she gets another static charge. And when she went outside, the object was gone, unfortunately. But So here we had three cases within weeks of objects that are fairly close by, and all three cases they were reporting static charges, which is something that's just very unusual. Do you think it has something to do with any kind of a storm in the area, or do you just think it's because of the um, the craft that they, the sighting? Uh, there, there was no weather conditions. There was no anyone. weather conditions, wow. Uh, nothing like that. We had no storms at the time. Uh, we, we checked those things out and no, there was, in fact, um, Jim Brown, who's a very, very good researcher, 
Uh, he's a very high tech person. He has some very good quality instrumentation. He got down to that area within the hour after it happened and he was able to check everything out and there was nothing he could find within the house or any, any reason for the static charge at that time. Is, what um, do you think about that, Cherish? I, well, a few things. I was going to say that, that remind, I looked up, um, because I saw this a long time ago about John Glenn, the astronaut on his first, I think it was his first orbit. Um, he saw a series of small particles floating that looked like little luminescent stars. And they've, they've compared and, and they've been seen by astronauts since that, and they compared them to fireflies. So I thought that was interesting. Um, but as far as the, um, the electrical charges, I know, um, uh, just yesterday or the day before, you know, I, I'm sensitive to electricity. I don't know, redheads, we, whatever. <laughs> um, but <laughs> we, we get shocked a lot. But um, I, I kept getting 1859. I looked it up, and 1859 was one of the largest geomagnetic storms ever recorded at that point in time in history. Do you think it's not like a weather storm, but like a geomagnetic storm? Uh, I haven't looked into that, but I've, I've not seen any data suggesting that. I'm not aware of anything like that. I mean, you know, we, we, there are times when there's um, solar flares, you have uh, things a lot, that type of thing going on. But um, so far in these reports, these particular ones, these seems to be directly related to the object that was close by, which is what's really inter interesting. And also one of the patterns I've found years and years ago, which is still ongoing, is that Many close-range, low-level UFO sightings and also encounters with Bigfoot and other cryptids, and many here in Pennsylvania, are commonly reported in the vicinity of high-energy sources. But so then again, that proves my theory. Around, that uh, proves my radio, theory. Radio, TV, cell phone towers, uh, high-tension power lines, power plants, uh, railroad tracks, bodies of water gas lines, and, and that's something that continues to be reported. And I, whatever was involved, and it's very, very complex, I, I began to find a lot of very strange things over the years associated with the Bigfoot phenomena and UFOs. And, and you know, there, there's so many very strange accounts we have from so many credible people over the years with Bigfoot. Because, you know, when I started this so many years ago, I started investigating Bigfoot sightings back in the 1960s in Pennsylvania. And I was, at that point, I thought we were done with some type of unknown animal. And then you had that massive outbreak here in Pennsylvania uh, with UFOs and then with Bigfoot that went on for weeks and months. And many of the sightings were close range in daylight. And then we had those significant cases where you had a UFO and a Bigfoot seen together at the same time and place. And then you had that one famous case north of Pittsburgh in September of 73, where you had the two witnesses that saw the seven foot, eight, uh, seven foot, a white, hairy, covered Bigfoot walking across the road towards the woods, and one of his hand was carrying a glowing ball of light. And these glowing balls of light are now more and more being reported again uh, in connection with some Bigfoot activity. It, it's a long, complex phenomena, and there's so much we just don't understand. I don't think anybody understands, including the government. That's crazy. What do you think about that, Trish? Um, well, anything with, um, power grids, um, cell phone towers, water, uh, railroad tracks, that's all more, more energy. It's all the elements. So, um, that makes sense. But I was going to say my own experience when, uh, numerous times when, I witnessed UFOs and all of my neighbors in a specific subdivision I used to live in. We were right next to a power grid. And when I would be coming home from work at night, it would be lit up on those specific nights that UFOs would, would be spotted, you know, like glowing the entire power grid because it was on a hill, which was interesting. It was, it was like something from a movie. Um, but we were also right next to a river and um, there was a gas, there was almost a gas explosion actually one of those times in my neighborhood because there was a major, a major line running through there as well. So that's interesting. 
If you have a question for Stan, you can give us a call at 985-747-3817. I posted in the chat if you happen to be watching on YouTube or on Facebook. And if you're in any New Orleans or anywhere around the country, if you have a comment or question for Stan, it's 985-747-3817. That's a, this has so many amazing stories, Stan. And, and there's so much going on that's just so strange and unusual. And, you know, what I started to say was that when I started investigating Bigfoot sightings in the early 70s, I thought these were some type of unknown primate. But as time went on, especially during the 70s and then in the years since then, there have been so many cases that are so strange with Bigfoot. And what I started writing about back in the 70s, well, now in more recent years, you're hearing a lot more about this now from other witnesses, from other researchers all around the country and around the world of the same thing going on, there is more and more data that indicate that whatever these, some of the, at least some of these Bigfoot creatures are, is that they do things that normal flesh and blood animals do not do. And, and you know, one of the first things we found when we had all these sightings going on in 73, and, you know, I had my first research group, that was the Westmore County UFO Study Group, and the group involved a lot of volunteers and most of them were professionals we had scientists and engineers technicians police officers former military people and we were out there day and night investigating cases and we would get out to some of these locations and there'd be trails of these large unusual footprints with big strides between them that would go for a distance and then just suddenly stop abruptly and there was no more trek even in fresh snow and that continues to go on year after year and that was one of the first things that began to make our eyes open. There's something here going on that's very unusual. And then the reports got stranger and stranger. And then we had this case with UFOs and Bigfoot seen together at the same time and place. And, what, and what, again, when I get into some of these cases I've talked about over the years, and I'm not suggesting that Bigfoot is a passenger or pilot in a spacecraft from another planet, because we don't know what we're dealing with. And uh, it may well be that we're dealing with more than one, uh, more than one source for the unknown category, the UFO mystery. And the more I know about this phenomena, when a lot of UFO cases are reported with cryptid cases, these seem seem to be both physical and non-physical at times. It can be physical evidence, and they're gone. They come and they go. But I think, for a lack of a better term, a lot of what we're dealing with might well be interdimensional. Interdimensional. And I've been I've been saying that. I've been saying wow, that. Pap's awake. For a long Amen. time. No, I've been awake. I've been awake. No, I've been saying that forever, and everybody laughs at me. And I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking to other people who study UFOs and Bigfoot. I have no doubt in my mind, in my heart, I do believe that them two are related, and them two work together. And I'll let it go for now. Well, I, I don't know if we've ever talked about the one case up in Fayette County during that massive wave in 73, 74, that was a convincing case to me and my teams that we're dealing with something with Bigfoot and UFOs that is just really unusual. And would you like me to tell you that story? Yes. Sure. <laughs> All right, so it's February 6, 1974. And I don't know if some of you may have been around at the time or you might be remember, but the reason you, a lot of people remember is <laughs> There was, was a big national trucker strike. Yeah. There was a there was gas rationing across the country. Mm -hmm. There was um, some there was some violence on the highways around the country and in Pennsylvania. So the National Guard and the state police were patrolling together. They both there were some members of both units that actually responded to this incident. I couldn't get up to the scene because I couldn't get gas that that evening in Greensburg. But anyhow, what happened was, so this is deep in the mountains, up in the direction towards Ohio Pile, where there have been a lot of big, Bigfoot sightings for years, and there still is. And this lady's in a little cabin home. She lived there all her life. She uh, knew animals very well. She was a very good shot. And she was sitting here watching TV that evening. And uh, she began to hear this little noise on her front porch. She had some empty pop cans out there, and something was knocking the pop cans around. So she uh, thought, you know what? There was a pack of wild dogs here a few weeks ago. I bet you those dogs are back. So she thought, I'll grab my shotgun, I'll load one chamber, and I'll fire over her head, and I'll scare those dogs away. So she proceeds to grab her shotgun. She loads one chamber. She walks over to the front. 
she uh, opens up the porch door and turns on the switch for the front light. And she steps out, and there's no dog there, but about I believe about six feet in front of her, here's this about seven foot tall, air covered Bigfoot, put his arm straight up over his head as soon as she turned the light on, and she's standing right in front of it, and she fires right into it. There's this bright, bright burst of light, like the flash on a camera and the creature physically vanishes and disappears right in front of her. That's not the end of the story. So her in-laws live about 100 feet away. They hear the gunshot. They call her on the phone and ask her what happened. She tried to tell them. The son-in-law grabs the sidearm, starts walking down that dark road towards the cabin. He sees a figure running ahead of him, and then he said he's surrounded by four or five airy people with eyes like coals of fire, starts shooting at them randomly, runs back into the cabin, and about the same time, there's this large object, like a big Christmas ornament, I was told, hovering over the trees at the same time. So that's when they called the state police. And I talked to the main investigating officer, and he said, by the time they got up there, everything was gone, but he said, something very strange happened at that scene. He said, when they got up there, these people had several big dogs, they had other farm animals, everything was quiet. The dogs wouldn't bark, they wouldn't make a sound, and that's very common with many cases we have where even the most ferocious dogs near Bigfoot generally won't make a sound. They don't move. They don't bark. That's very common. That's so it. that was the case that convinced me, among others that later happened, that we're dealing with something that has a physical and a non-physical component to it. Hmm. That, that's pretty interesting. It's amazing how the animals can pick up things that we we don't see. So yeah, do you think it's uh, that's very ever common. Lots for... of reports we have with both UFOs and Bigfoot, including recent reports where there were animals uh, disturbed by UFOs hovering low to the ground. One just happened uh, a few weeks ago outside of Pittsburgh, and uh, this stuff is going on. It goes on so much more often than people realize. You don't hear about it in the news because 99% of the people that report these things want no publicity. And I deal with these cases regularly, all the time. And a lot of these are current reports, or some are older reports that people didn't uh, report in. And most of these people would never believe these things exist until they had their own personal experience. And many of them, it's been a life-changing experience for them. I would say it would be. Um, Stan, I have to talk, make a short break. Um, can you stay for? Can you stay on after the break? It's only going to take me about a minute. Sure. Okay. All right. Then we're just going to. This segment is brought to you by Focus, and I'm going to play a short video. Remember last week we were talking about the um, my rant on sugar guys. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in this next minute. So I want to see if it's going to. We've been, we were talking last week before um, about how sugar really is horrible and how it messes with you. Not only does it mess with your teeth, it's addicting. And it took me a month to wean off of it from my holiday indulgence. You know that we consume too much sugar through beverages like energy drinks, sodas, coffee, and 80% of health issues stem from bad choices we make in our diet and sugar. You all know, like I've been doing keto and I did the um, 30 day challenge with carnivore and I've been trying to stay away from cola but it's really oh hard God. to do. Um, I have not found a caffeinated sparkling water until I found Focus. Have you guys heard of Focus? Nope. Nope. You really? haven't heard of it? Nope. Well, I'm going to tell you a real short little spew for Okay. And I think we're having an echo here, but I'm sorry about that. Um, I found it to be a caffeinated drink and it's sparkling water and I love it. And um, I just want to let you know the focus is better than any other energy drink that you can get. Now there is 75 milligrams of caffeine, <laughs> zero sugar and zero sweeteners. Seriously, guys, if you haven't tried it, focus is a delicious health conscious, thoroughly caffeinated sparkling water infused with boost of natural tea caffeine, caffeine and balance of L- lithothene and you can get clean energy from it so you know it probably had some already because i'm a little no 
you won't get that with this. It's jitter free. So, you know, I like to drink a lot of caffeine. So when I can't spill out the words, <laughs> but Jason, you know that uh, what I like about focus is that the fact that focus provides you with jitter free boost compared to any other caffeinated sugary beverage. And what do you think about that? Simply made to boost balance and bubbles. It's non GMO. So you can ditch the sugar and soda and energy. <laughs> this will make you feel great, especially if you're on a, a workout. If you're doing intermittent fasting, you need to replenish your electrolytes. This will do the trick. It's natural caffeine derived from tea. Okay, so it'll give you that same boost of an eight ounce cup of coffee and a re Refreshing, thirst quenching form. So check it out. Your body needs water, and this will give it to. Has a dozen, oh, blood, oh, so many mixed berry, cola, cherry, root beer, crisp apples, my favorite. So this can be found on drinkfocus.com, and there's over 4,000 grocery stores. And if your grocery store doesn't have it, go talk to the manager and tell them to get it in. I got a discount code for you guys it's Chase and Prophecy. It's a dollar can, making it $12 for a variety pack. To check it out on our Facebook page, you can hit the link. And remember, Chase and Prophecy is the code. Okie dokie, pokies. We're back to the story. Go ahead, Stan. I'm sorry for uh, bragging about my favorite caffeinated drink, but I love it. So um, let me to ask you. Okay, we talked about um, the boom um, that we heard all over Pittsburgh. Do you remember the boom that we heard, um, the sonic? Yeah, there were, we actually, what was it really interesting that a lot of the people out there have missed was the fact that there were two booms. I have yep. it on their website. I wrote an article about it. There were two booms uh, two days apart. I mean, just one, one day and one the next day. So you had one December 31st, which was the interesting one. But the one everybody was talking about occurred, I believe, was January 1st. And um, anyway, that's the one we'll start. And that one, after we didn't have a lot of initial information. We were getting a lot of reports of the greater Pittsburgh area, so a lot of different areas around. But as more information came in, uh, we began to get the information that um, the very that the, the boom was also felt uh, in West Virginia, Ohio, and it began to look more and more like we are dealing with a bull light. On this extra, extraordinarily bright fireball meteor that at times can produce sonic booms. And there was enough data later on from information that came in that indicates that, that the big one that made a lot of news was very likely uh, created by a fireball meteor. And we've had those happen in past years over Pennsylvania and other areas as well. But um, the one that was really intriguing. And I, so far, we've still not been able to come up with a good explanation for it. That was the one that occurred um, December 31st. And um, that one uh, occurred mainly in areas north of Latrobe, so or through Dairy Township, all through that area, up into uh, around Blairsville, up in the Indiana County, so about a 20 mile area. That was around, I believe, around 1.30 in the afternoon. And um, so that was uh, pretty interesting. And um, so that's the one that, uh, again, uh, we still don't have an explanation for. Every once in a while, we get these mystery booms. And, and over the years, you know, we've been able to find explanations for some of them. Uh, sometimes in the wintertime, when you have the freezing conditions, you, you have what they call a frost quake that produce one in, in an area. Uh, sometimes, you know, you could have a sonic boom from an aircraft, which is very rare in this area. Um, sometimes it's meteorological. There have been earthquakes around here. And so there was various explanations, but back in the 60s, when I started investigating these cases, they called them skyquakes. And, uh, and in fact, there, there's so many of these happening. Another big one occurred, I think, about a week ago. Uh, I think it was a Monday afternoon uh, in New Jersey right outside of Pennsylvania that was making a lot of news down there. Last I heard, uh, and I haven't seen any about it since, but they were not able to come up with an explanation. But there, there's whole websites out there devoted to these mystery booms that are occurring more and more around the country and around the world. What do you think they are? Well, that's uh, I was just saying that sometimes there's explanations for them and sometimes there is not. What do you think it, what do you think it is? Uh, 
I really am not sure. <laughs> Uh, I know what I think it is. <laughs> what do you think it is? What do you think it is I, I just think there's just so much, there's so much in the atmosphere right now that a lot of people, I, mean, I know this is a very controversy um, topic, but I think we're getting close to the apocalypse. And I think that those are like portals that are opening up. I think a lot of it has to do with that. I mean, I know I'm a Christian and I believe that, but I don't know what you guys believe. Um, I just think that there's too many, um, well, the trumpets, you know, the trumpets in Revelation, how they talk about it. Was it Gabriel's um, or something? That was Gabriel's. Yeah, yeah I mean, there, I mean, we've heard trumpets. I don't know if you've heard the trumpets. Yeah. I've heard the trumpets. There was no trumpets. But, but you know what? If you heard the trumpets, there was, there's some uh, YouTube videos where people are actually you know manipulating the sound of you mean trumpets. like a um project blue book no 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 these um they're over in russia ukraine over around in that area where they show you on youtube where they're actually mimic or like manipulating the sound of trumpets okay would some people even think that you know i know that there's some kind of a uh, uh, a ufo mothership i don't know stan if you heard that story that sometimes they open up the i guess the the dimension or some kind of a portal that they open up or beam and it makes did that you watch independence voice. day yeah i did <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i just find it you know there's too many strange things that are happening lately and the more I mean, now they're talking about all these asteroids and how they're going to try to blow them up. And, and, and it seems like they must be getting so close that they're really worried about it. And you think maybe that's what we're hearing? Maybe they're you trying these out, <laughs> experimenting with them? And these, these mystery booms, like a lot of these other phenomena, they're not new. These things have been going for years and years. I mean, you know, the UFO sightings, I mean, in, in our recent history, sightings of things, strange objects in the sky go back to at least the late 1800s, and there's many people who believe they went back many, many years before that, even in biblical references. You have Bigfoot sightings, they've been around for years and years. You know, the Native Americans talk about it, there's articles in newspapers in the 1800s in Pennsylvania, they don't call them Bigfoot back then, they call them the wild man of the woods, or the wild man of the forest. And a lot of these other strange things are going, uh, they're not something that's, that's more recent, but the interesting thing is, there's a lot of lot of activity has been going on. I mean, it has been very busy. I mean, I'm getting Thunderbird reports. Yeah, reports yeah, of these that's... huge flying creatures. You know, there have been a number of sightings last year. It's on my website. You can read about them. Some are really significant sightings. Well, most of them are in daylight. Yes. And some have been at very, very close range. And these people swear. I talked to a guy called me about one that happened a few weeks ago. He's been hunting since he was a little kid. And he said, I, I can't believe I saw what I saw. I talked to another person, actually called me from out of state a few days ago, saw so one in an early evening out of state, didn't know about the sighting I had here in Pennsylvania, and this person, I mean, I would say was a uh, pretty much a, a near professional ornithologist who studied birds and just could not believe that this person saw, that they saw what they saw. So you're talking in these other cases, that are, the estimates are around a 15-foot wingspan. And I had I had one case that was really um, really good case happened in neighboring West Virginia. This was back oh, 2000, 2008 on a two lane farm road, two lane country road. Guys riding down there early morning as they hit his brakes. There's this huge giant flying creature on the ground eating roadkill. It, it stood at least four feet tall. It was on top of his vehicle. Its wings were spread out and it's flapping its wings trying to get off the ground. So it's only a two lane road. He can see the wingtips. So he can see the dust and dirt going up off the road as it's trying to raise itself off the ground, which it finally did. He went back the next day and measured the width of the road. It was 21 feet across. Yeah, if you have to see, I've seen one. I've seen one. I've seen one about probably 10 years ago it was on a um, country road it was on the top of an ice cream um farm like they have an ice cream store but it was right in the middle of the farmland and i've seen it it's scary i've not, i won't it'll stay with me the rest of my life I've, I've seen it before what area was that in that was in westmoreland county uh 
give me a more better idea because I've had many before. Um, do you know where it's like Irwin? Um, you know where Shram's Farm is? Yeah, and I, out and that I've way. Had reports in that area, down around Harmony, down around Irwin, Jeanette. Mm -hmm. There have been reports all through that area. All there, there was an interesting incident, a, a daylight sighting in Monroeville a couple years ago, right over top of the trees, very, very low. But again, you don't hear about the stories on the news because yeah. most people want no publicity. They don't want to hear about. They're just, they don't want to be like, <laughs> look at that crazy person saying. <laughs> 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 Now, is, have you ever dealt with uh, people who witness these things that Can't hear aren't you, afraid you. of not being uh, called a dummy and try to um, get it on the news? Will the news post it? Will they print it? I, I couldn't hear if he was talking to me. I'm sorry. Yeah, he was asking you. Do you think? Wait, go ahead and repeat it again, Sean. I turned you up. Oh, you tuned me out. Why? <laughs> oh, I turned you up. I don't know why. Oh, I couldn't hear you oh, either. Man, damn. <laughs> Turn me up. What I'm saying, oh, Stan, what I'm saying is, um, <laughs> did you ever get a a client who witnessed something and they weren't afraid to, you know, put it in the news? There, oh, you know, I've, again, I've been doing this for a long, long time, over 60 years. And over many, many years, you know, in fact, long before we had the internet, the local papers would cover these stories uh, quite often. There was and a time before the internet? the internet. And uh, now there's so many places to report, you know, back back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, uh, and, and, and the times mainly before we had the internet as we know it today, a lot of people, they would, they would call the local police or they would call the news media to see if anybody had seen anything. And then I would hear about a lot of these reports. And there were many, many stories during the 73 Bigfoot outbreak. Many, many local papers were carrying serious stories about what was going on. Or if you look at my solid invasion book, there's many references to the, the many newspaper stories around Pennsylvania that cover those stories. So they were covered in the in the Pittsburgh papers and the Greensburg Tribune Review, some of them, like Joe Bulletin. I mean, it, and all over this area there were reports. And, and some of these made the statewide news and some made national news. So yes, these some of these cases have been covered, but you know, things have changed a lot, and people now they, they contact people through the internet sometimes. My hotline, which was open in 1969, it never stops ringing. I get calls on these things all the time, and um, I, there have been some newspaper stories, you know, where they still cover it, uh, and uh, so some of the local papers still do stories, and occasionally somebody will come forward and talk about what they've seen and. There have been some incidents uh, from other parts of the state uh, where one fellow was, I think, a mayor of a town in Pennsylvania a few months ago, and his local destroyed his Bigfoot sighting, or a Bigfoot encounter. Trish, what do you think? Oh, I was going to say on the on the sonic booms, uh, or here anyways, there were two today, which was ironic, but it was funny because... Um, I, I knew I was actually sitting by a Sonic, you know, the, the drive-in before. And I, I kept thinking, go home, go home, because, because my heart, they affect it. But there were two, and usually they report, but they didn't sound like the normal Sonic booms because it was back in uh, 2020, the Kansas Supersonic Transportation Corridor, with some agreement they signed to, um, but it was all kind of kept quiet that they were going to start researching. Um, it, they said it's kind of like the space program in some ways, um, but there's actually that they're bringing back specific, um, they called them sonic booms. So, um, but what I also always find fascinating with everybody in Pennsylvania is you mentioned Westmoreland and everything, you know, a lot of things mirror Kansas and, and Pennsylvania. And we have a Westmoreland right, you know, down the road. So <laughs> all these same things happen. Actually, it seems like Kansas got them before Pennsylvania, though, because we've had chemtrails and stuff for years, too. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, Stan, you have so much to talk about. Um, so where do you go from here? Do you just keep um, getting the, you know, calls on your site i mean is there have you gone out to see any of the um locations that people saw sightings 
Well, you know, that's what I did for years and years with my teams. I mean, when we get not every, you know, today's a lot different. There's a lot of things people report that you can easily explain. There's a lot, while there's sightings going every year that are not easily dismissed and you cannot explain, there's also many, many UFO reports in particular, and even with Bigfoot, there's a lot of misidentification. But with UFOs, you've got bright planets and stars. With the atmosphere condition, they get brighter and dimmer and look like they're moving around. You've got, we've got a lot of reports of the Starlink satellites in the area. People are calling in as UFOs. We have reentry of space debris on occasion. We have uh, had the, some big fireball meteors come over. We have uh, searchlights. Uh, we have meteorological incidents. We had uh, ice, some uh, uh, ice pillar reports in a few weeks ago where you see these vertical columns of light in the morning. There's a lot of things that look strange that you can explain. So not every case warrants going out. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I've gone out many, many cases. Uh, I don't get out as good as I used to anymore. I get out when I can, but I have other, some, I don't have my groups anymore, but I have other contact with other good researchers out there who are able to get out and follow up on some cases that need follow it up. So I, I interview people regularly. I keep records of all these cases. I look at the similar, similarities and the patterns. And uh, so I'm very busy all the time dealing with these subjects. Do you think we're getting closer to having a direct contact with one of these um, beings or UFOs or even Bigfoot? Do you think we're ever going to get in contact that we can actually sit down and have a conversation with them? Well, that's something we can speculate for a long time. <laughs> there's, there's so many stories out there from around the world, so many interesting things. These sightings go on all over the world week after week. Bigfoot sightings go on. Uh, the, you got Thunderbirds. You got other weird creature reports we get here in Pennsylvania and around the country. There is so much that goes on, and and yes, has been very very active, and uh, and of course now you know if you've been watching the news in recent months, uh, you probably are aware now that the Pentagon, the U.S. government, is now officially opening up a new office to investigate UFO mm -hmm. sightings. So it's opened the door a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now they're at least admitting. There are objects in the sky that they cannot identify. They're taking it much more seriously. And, um, you know, you had congressmen, um, uh, Democrats and Republicans both, who were really interested in this, pushing to get this done. And now it is being done. So in the weeks ahead, months ahead, I'm sure you'll hear more on the news about it. We'll have to wait and see how open they'll be with the public and with Congress. Um, you know, we're hopeful because we've seen in past uh, UFO investigation case that the Air Force did that there was a lot of information that the public never heard about and never will. There was a lot of classified information, which I'm sure there's going to be a lot of classified information we're probably still not going to hear about, but at least it, it's an opening that now they're at least admitting that there are incidents going on out there, that uh, military personnel, Navy personnel are seeing these things. There's things moving around the ships out in the ocean. And uh, maybe pilots are seeing them, but it goes far beyond that. I mean, over the years, I've interviewed numerous commercial pilots, private pilots, corporate pilots who have seen these things over Pennsylvania. And uh, again, this is a phenomena that is ongoing. It goes on year after year, all year round. These things are all going on. And if anybody out there wants to talk with me, they can reach, they can go to my website, stangordon.info. All my contact information's on there. And I'll be glad to talk with them or they can share their experience if they like. Well, it sounds good to me. Well, thank you so much for coming back on. We appreciate it. Thank you, Sam. Um, yes, thank you, thank Sam. Thank you, Sam. You have a lot of information, interesting information. We'll be staying, staying close to you. You have a great night. All right. Thanks very much. Have a good evening. You too. You too. Bye-bye. Yeah. Very interesting. I have to say, I always like listening to Stan Gordon. He has so much, so many years of experience in this phenomenon. Over 60 it's, years. I know. It's like, Sean, wow. you're getting there. You're 31. Yeah, I'm at 31. <laughs> you're 31 years experience. If I live to be another 29 years. You're not going to make it. No, I don't think so Let's either. I don't want to make it, man. God, I've seen you eat. It's going to kill you. Oh, man. No, I've been losing weight. I don't do the keto or I don't do, you know, the, <laughs> Did you the take carnivore shit. Because I haven't noticed. Hey, let me I tell just, you. I No, seriously. I've been like 
bought some when I'm eating. You have to. As you eat it, right? You know, we're, I don't know. It's good <laughs> no, to no. watch. It's because well, you longevity and you want to be healthy and you're going to have grandkids someday. You want to be able to run after them. It, that never happened, Jenny. That will never happen. I'll, you're be never sitting gonna... on the, I'll be sitting on the porch tossing the football at them. That's what I'm You're not going to get up? and. Oh, hell no. Come on. Well, if you're dropping all these pounds by the time they're here, you should be skinny as a twig. You'd be oh, running around. Can you, can you imagine me? According to the American Medical Association, oh, here for my height, no, listen, seriously, I'm supposed to weigh 170. Well, you don't pounds. have to go by that. Well, of yeah, but that was also made back in like the 50s when everybody was a lot smaller. Well, they're still going with that. Well, right? if you go by that, they, they, I don't believe in that insurance company things because everybody would be overweight. Even Trish would be a. We are all morbidly <laughs> obese. We are. I we go are to the gym a, every day. I would be yeah, overweight. We are I obese. I'm. I mean, <laughs> it, you're well, right. Say, if, if you go by them, because muscle weighs more than fat. Okay, you know, I don't know. I. I, I don't no, think I, I could I, be skinny. To be honest with you. Why do you want to be skinny? I don't yeah, know. you don't I, want to be skinny. You gotta look like I Santa Claus be, for December. I just want to be fit and healthy. That's all. I want to be sexy in 60. <laughs> you got it already. So why worry about it? You're so oh funny. My. No, You're I'm so being funny. honest with you, oh. Jenny. Oh. Okay. I'm being so honest Just with accept you. who you are and yes. live your life and be happy. Oh my How about God. that? I like to be healthy, Trish. You right? remind me of Marilyn yes. Monroe. Oh, my God. My yeah, you want to be. Uh, I like going to the gym. I feel I'm addicted to it. I like to work out. Uh, and I'll tell it's, you what about my gym experience. Okay, you want to go off this is 40 years ago? No, no, no. This was like two or three You're years ago. Two years ago. You didn't go yeah. to the gym yes, I for did. an investigation. We did that, was about uh, it. <laughs> what you had an investigation no, I, at a You gym. know what? I'm in there, and I mean, I, I see these hear dudes and dudettes running on the treadmill doing all these things and here i come in 285 pounds and it's like they look at me like "Ooh, what are you doing here you don't well, you're belong getting here fit. you're getting fit that's why you got but the gym. still i get a complex about it that oh, to should. me they're looking at me like what are you i think you just that? assume they're looking at you yeah Everybody oh, i know i'm assuming i'm <laughs> going to the gym do they they gotta work around. out is to be healthy Right, so like nobody's gonna. To well, I mean, some people might, but who cares? I mean, what they think? Nobody. Them. People usually don't criticize other people. They're actually at the gym because they're doing something. You and know, wearing I mean? spandex and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. You can go to Planet Planet Fitness. They don't, you know, if you really want to go. But I mean, I mean I, you know what was crazy about gym? <laughs> I was going to work. I started at like five in the morning one time. Oh yeah. And and there's and they're opened up and there's yeah, like I used to go 30 cars in the morning. parking lot. 30 cars in the parking lot. I was like, damn. Well, once you get yeah, the yeah, working out in the morning, you usually have more energy for the I day, used to go it. out to 5 30 in the morning when my kids were still in bed, and I would go to the gym. But not anymore. I work out at home now. <clears throat> Well, anyway, so, it's getting back. Go ahead, Trish. Sorry. Uh, well, about the, uh, I was going to say something with the stand thing. Have you all, it made me think about um, sonic booms and water and the research they did about that, how far it penetrates into water. Um, mm -hmm. A few years ago, you know, the Navy, there were all these, these reports and that they were killing fish and um, like dolphins and whales and stuff. Did you all hear about? Yeah, I heard, I heard about that. that. And it was the frequency, the sound of it under the water that was throwing it off. But if that happens in the ocean um, and can penetrate water to a certain depth, humans are made of primarily water. So how do you think that would affect us? It's a cool move. Well, you know what, Trish? I, all I know is when all this weird stuff is going on, I'm acting like even today because it's a full moon. It's like I am so sensitive to all that what's going on out there, and I can see if there is the sonic boom and it has something to do with water. We're made, like you said, up of water. We're gonna affect. We're gonna be affected by it somehow. Especially I mean, if they do them like around a full moon. That's and that's why I was thinking with my heart, you know, and with AFib and stuff because that that triggers it a lot of the times. Not not only just the full moon, but but yeah, things like the no. Uh, do you know when you're having? Flares. Do you know that you can you feel that when you go into AFib or not? Yeah, and it's always 
during the solar flares, power surges, full moon, things like that. So that's why I'm wondering how much, you know, full moons, I'm, I'm sure they affect every animals and, and everything. If they can, if it can penetrate into the ocean that far, I'm sure it's, it's affecting people as well. Most definitely. I think it oh, yeah. does. I think it affects us. And I, the full moon really affects me. I f could feel it coming on two days ago. I was like so yeah, me agitated. Too is the weirdest thing ever. So agitated. I wanted to punch somebody. <laughs> it's like, it's three days before you. and three days after. So about seven days in there. So this is just, I just yeah, wanted... it's weird. It's just like a whole week of chaos. Yeah. yeah. Really anger. It is. It is. We, seriously, I'm like that, Jason. I get so angry and so I can't listen. Oh, to I agree it. with you. I just want to choke people out all day. Well, I want to do that every day as it is, anyways. But uh, this so, week, more lately, than most. you know, it seems like it seems like the there's certain times of the full moon. Like it's like right before the full moon, like the day before, and then like I'm fine after tomorrow. I'll be fine. But today is like, oh my God. But leading up to the full moon is when I have a personality problem. <laughs> Augie yeah. has a question. He goes, sure. why does the full moon affect the way people act and behave? And I'll tell you why. Because like Tristan, you said, our body's made up of 70% water. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know what it does when the full moon comes in? It affects the tides out there in the oceans. So it's actually affecting us on the inside. Definitely. It does mess you up. Um, well, it's getting back on track. Um, we're going to talk about some things that, well, one of them was the red chemtrails. Now, Trisha came up with some really interesting stuff about the, the chemtrails. Um, Trisha, you want to talk about that? What you posted today, was it yesterday, about the chemtrails in the cleft palates? Yeah. Is that Oh, yeah, well, yeah, no, yeah. That, was, that was about Kansas. Um, so the water, going back to water here, <laughs> um, which is funny. It's crazy that I, I went grocery shopping this morning. And um, last week, there was a water main break. This morning, three people stopped, just random strangers while I was shopping and talked about water in, in different areas. One, one guy was talking about how he had well water and recently something ha he just had to spend a lot of money to get that fixed or something. And then somebody else said um, they're going to start buying water. I mean, just out of the blue, just walked up to me and told me this randomly. Um, they're going to start buying water from the local, uh, it's like Lindy Spring or something um, that distributes bottled water. And then, um, and then the water main break. And I'm thinking, you know, that's, that's odd that, that's happened all, all well, in, within like 10 minutes. <laughs> well, he's seriously about buying water because you, you should stock up on the water. You don't know what's going to Yeah, and, well, and I had just bought a big, um, I, I refill those big like five gallon jugs. And, well, uh, getting the chemtrails. Now, there's there's this, a lot of people are seeing this red chemtrails. Now, now. When I think of red chemtrails, I think of pesticides. Now, there's thinking of other stuff. Do you, do you, has any of you guys heard about the uh, chemtrails, especially the ones that are colored? No, not so much about the colored ones, but I did do a little research on chemtrails. And a lot of articles that I read from France, from Britain, and the United States, they're all claiming that there's nothing wrong with these chemtrails that it's actually a plane releasing mist into the air and it's i was like engines thank you yeah so it's like okay so you see all these planes going on and releasing this stuff in the air they're, they're from their engines but they said there is no way is there is any biological warfare or whatever the government okay. is trying to do okay well why is there so many is it because there we i mean there's so many, many. There there's there's so many i remember that one time i did an investigation down in salaroy and i brought this up a long time ago that it was like in the middle of winter time and when i went out to have a smoke there were actually three crosses honest to god like the big one and two small ones on the side 
of the chemtrail, and I'm thinking, what the hell? How did that happen? Did you ever see a blue chemtrail? Never did. I've That's never. when planes are emptying the bathrooms. Are you serious? Yeah. Is it, there's red, white, and blue, right? There yes, was like America. a there's a book about that red, or white, something. And blue. So that's their that's their <laughs> yeah, just like Porta Johns. You know, you got the blue oh mess God. water down there. So when plane, you see blue ones, that's just planes releasing all that waste. Okay, well, so we just we just figure it's nothing to be worried about that they're not no kind of okay no. So, okay. <laughs> so in Kansas, though, there was actually there was a report Back um, in Kansas <laughs> years ago. Uh, this is from 2010 because it was from it was when California started doing the the study of chemtrails, and um, Kansas does so many because we have all the farm you know there's all the farmland yeah, and stuff. All the farmland. Um, but they said what they're now breathing in. Um, gosh, ethylene, aluminum oxide, um, barium salts, mercury. What's all this? They, they, but all these things that cause, um, and I've noticed um, every time they do this around here, everybody's coughing and has asthma problems and all kinds of stuff. And then what I was telling you all about as far as the chemtrails over the, the fields with the pesticides and stuff, that's where it leaches into the food. So then they did studies that starts affecting the livestock, obviously. Yeah. All of your wheat, all of your corn, all of your soy. Um, and then it... Kansas, the water obviously drains the Kansas River, you know, goes through Missouri all the way down south to, south to the Gulf. So it goes to the ocean. It's, we're one of the major, um, you know, in the Midwest. Um, I learned this at the zoo this summer, actually. They, they had an entire, they had a study about it, the entire diagram of how much um, all of the chemicals and fertilizers and stuff that yeah. are put which, are put on the crops in the Midwest where most of them Don't are. Don't you think all those chemicals are causing problems with birth defects? Just like, yeah, just like absolutely. Rhonda just said, chemtrails can have bacteria, viruses, chemicals that can affect mm -hmm. the environment, our crops, our children. Yeah. I think there's more to it than I just have to disagree with you, Jason and Sean. I do think that something is going on because it seems like the more chemtrails there are in a certain area, there's more rising birth defects and cancers. Yeah. So I'm with you, Trish, on that. So I'm sorry and, to tell you, Sean and Jason, but you, er, beep, you're out. <laughs> oh, and on, really? and that's so in the schools Dang. here, you know, as far as reports on um, even cancer in young children, um, the the cleft lips, cleft palates, yeah. things that are directly related to, um, especially um, all the the chemical, not the fertilizers, but the pesticides. Um, yeah. I mean, that contaminates not just the water, the soil, everything. So the air, <laughs> clearly. So. so, okay, here, okay, come back at you, all right? So as you were saying that all this caused all these defects to people and getting sick and stuff like that, then every single person has to have a cleft lip, correct? No, that doesn't happen. That, no. that doesn't why happen. not? But you're well, I got something on the chemtrails have, here. So, what? I'm just saying it causes so, the chemtrails. While we're talking about chemtrails, we do all know that that only appears when a plane is above 10,000 feet because of the fuel that's vaporizing, right? Okay. Everybody knows that, right? Oh, but when planes are below that altitude, you don't see it because obviously at a different altitude. And Justin said air pollution kills about 5 million persons annually worldwide. We're going to continue on this. But first of all, I want to say thank you to our sponsors who are sponsoring this second hour of Chasing Prophecy. is brought to you by Carnation. Thank you, Carnation. Breakfast <laughs> Essentials. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you but, yet? Have you done the vanilla one yet? No, I didn't. But I I did finish the box, so I need to get another one. So, okay. and I hear voices behind me. Again. Um, oh, there she is. There there she she is. Oh, no, she's coming to knock the screen over again. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. She's, I don't know. She's real needy lately. I don't know. Her sister's not doing well. So, Trish, where can we like get some more information on these chemtrails? Well, Where can we actually say, research? I want to know how they are all this other crap other than uh, just fuel that's vaporizing. 
I want to know. I want to see proof that it's all okay. Okay, well, me and Trish are going to find proof. Yeah, we'll there's talk there's about actually that next week. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also, I was going to say, the um, the Weather Channel app, you know, on, on most smartphones now, if you look up your city, your, your uh, and most people don't pay attention to this, there's an air quality um, meter. And then there's mm-hmm. also UV index, which is really good to pay attention to because the UV index has to do with the their studies on, on uh, solar flares and everything like that. So it could be in Kansas over the summer, I was paying attention to this because it was harder to breathe. And, and they said for people, the air quality often alerted people with lung problems, heart problems, um, COPD, things like that. And the air quality here one time was over a hun- like 150, 160 um, index. And that's like, they say over a hundred is toxic to normal people without yeah. immune compromise, you know, anything wrong with them, healthy people. And then, so it's harmful to them. So can you imagine what it's doing to it? And this, these were days that people are out mowing their lawns and doing all yeah. that, you know, it really affect them. Because Sometimes that happens easy. here and I can't go outside. I'm, I can't yeah. breathe the air and I'll get sick. And one time, I think it was a few summers ago in Western Pennsylvania, people woke up to this white stuff. It's like film over everything. It was on their porches, their cars. Um, their lawn it was not we called the um the epa to come out to see what it was because it was everywhere it was like there was like little balls and it wasn't it was they found out that it was not hay fever it was something from the atmosphere that was all over Um, you guys ever see it sean jason it was a white film that was everywhere Mm-mm. Okay, well, we're going to move on to our next topic for this week, <laughs> and it is the what the penitentiary. Did you happen to see that video um, that I posted about the Moundsville Penitentiary, guys? I actually investigated the penitentiary a long time ago. I was trying to find a commercial. It was about eight to ten years ago. We did a commercial down there for WPXI, and. Mm-hmm. Um, during the shot, we were actually filming a commercial for their haunted house that they got down there. And um, but in between shots, and they were setting up the other shot, we actually got to investigate the penitentiary. And to be honest with you, I didn't really pick anything up. I think it's all okay. Well, listen to this and let's see what you guys think. Okay. Here it comes. Sideways from side 17. 
and kind of stared me down for about five seconds and I froze in fear because I thought I don't want to continue walking towards it. I don't want to turn my back on it. So a few moments later, I decided I'm going to walk out backwards. And the entire time I did that, I got out of sight around the corner. Whatever that thing was, was still standing there staring at me. Did you hear that? Jason, Dan, our cameraman, and I stood alone on the fourth floor. The former site board we didn't make that sound, but if not us, then who? The people that don't believe me, I tell them, I say, come spend the night here. It's here. <laughs> it's here. And the man's been penitentiary for seven news. I'm Stephanie Grindley, working for you. I don't know, Sean. That kind of scared me. Why is that scary? Me and Jason deal with that every time we go out and investigate. So I think it's haunted. Okay, yeah, you, it's haunted. You, you you said you didn't think it was haunted. No, we didn't pick anything up when we were down there. Uh, the the place that really creeped me out down in that whole place, there's a little chapel that sits out in the middle of the field. That that creeped me out. But I I mean, we got our cameras, we did everything we could, our EVPs, and so you got, think it's a dud? And you think no, it's, a it's not dud. The place is haunted. I mean, you can feel it in the air. But me and Jason deal with that wherever we go. Well, Jason, what do you think about Moundsville? You think it's a. I personally haven't been there. Uh, it's definitely on my bucket list to check out, you know, to, you know, especially with all the equipment I have, you know, run all kinds of different cameras and meters and whatever. And, uh, you know, I've caught a Shadow Man on actual camera before. I think it was on a Nikon D3300 in the cemetery so i do believe that you know it's possible to catch up shadow figures and yeah. you know hopefully someday i can investigate the penitentiary and yeah. you know, actually see for myself if it's haunted or not or if it's just old building noises and you know okay crazy lightings well we got a caller go ahead caller hi go ahead i'm sorry i had you on mute go ahead uh, I, I said hi everybody how are you good 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 You know, I, I agree with you on a big point there. Um, a lot of it's commercial hike. Um, I went out there with uh, Shelly for our paranormal, and we spent the night and had a private investigation. And the only place that we captured anything, um, and we actually got it on tape-recorded evidence, and believe it or not, it was in Red Snyder's cell. Um, Shelly actually still has the clips, and they were playing as day. Um, as for the rest of the prison, we went on a private investigation and I also went with on one of those commercial hype ones where there was absolutely nothing that went on. But um, I think what's going on now because they're hiring these entertainment companies to come in, you know, and push the penny to get some money that it's really taken away from um, any kind of credible investigations over there anymore. And I think that the um, people are kind of falling off the charts. So they need some more hype to pull it back in. Yes. Hello, yeah, Rhonda. Rhonda. Yes. Thank you for calling, Rhonda. Well, thank you for calling us. Uh, no problem. Well, she said it, so... I mean, it is all hype to try because they're trying to get publicity. Do you, for shows. do you know that it costs three figures to go down there to investigate overnight? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. How it's much? A hundred. Hundred bucks. Hundred twenty-five a person. A person. A person. Are you That's about out average nowadays. Like I think. Like 11. But we can go to places where we don't have to pay, and get better evidence than what you get down there. All it is. Oh wherever, yeah, Shoot, I, could, I could go to my wherever, backyard and <laughs> where, wherever taps when they started, wherever they went, okay, mm -hmm. those places, Eastern Penn, Eastern Penn. The last I heard, it was twenty five hundred for a night investigation. Twenty five hundred. So yeah. in order to cut, the, yeah, it was that honestly, and you would have to. In order, in in order to afford that, you would have to get a hundred people at twenty five dollars a piece, and who wants to investigate with a hundred people? You do. No. <laughs> <laughs> All no. right. Well, moving on to our next. Why topic. are we moving on? I mean, why? <laughs> because I, think I go ahead. I'm sorry. Go well. Ahead, I was talking about this last night because so I have a huge problem with places um, 
not making a profit, but using the place for profit and not improving it. So there's a lot of, um, oh gosh. Trish, don't you think they all want to make profit? I mean, absolutely. I'm, I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying there, mo- a lot of the places around here charge, um, oh, I mean, well over $150, $200 um, per person. And, it, but that's not going to improving the building or improving. Yeah, um, but no, they're just doing it for the so, for their so pocket. It's, yeah, it's just creating even more negativity, um, especially for the spirits there, because it's like you're just you're there for their, they are there for your amusement and you're making money. It's like a circus, you know, well, it, so, most of it is all entertainment though. Think about uh, it. I mean, uh, no, see, I don't see it that way as no. medium at all because it's not I entertainment think at all. you get a haunted houses in October around Halloween for entertainment. Yeah. That's right. Entertainment. Ghost hunting is different. And, and that's like, what I'm saying. Know. And that's the difference because spirits can one, give us a lot of information historically about crimes about all kinds of things and you know it's like i always tell people how would you feel if that was if you knew that was one of your your ancestors one of your relatives and somebody was exercising that every single night just for somebody you know for somebody's well yeah well, don't you think don't you think the family doesn't like that i mean if you're gonna keep doing it i mean trying to like on the, the blair right. house all these people that live in this so, house I mean, why do you keep wanting conjuring them up? Mm-hmm. Let them rest in peace. Exactly. Exactly. Now there's so one place. so what it's doing is creating even more. You go there, more... you do that, you round them up, you get them all riled up, and it's they... creating more negative energy, not just True. there in the entire area of the house. So I, I'm sorry. Uh, what was what was the guest from the Hinsdale house that we? I his name just slipped my mind a few weeks ago. Dan. Um, yes. Uh, so he was saying they're doing things to improve the property, right? Mm-hmm. You know, fixing it up, planting flowers, stuff like that. And now the they're having better experiences with interactions with the spirits there, which makes right. sense. Why do all interactions have to be negative and cause us like a jump thrill factor? You know what I mean? I think it's kind of cruel to the spirits, but, mm-hmm. but that's because it's a medium. That's I, what I, I, why don't the spirits leave then? That's a question. That I'm yeah, that's, a, that's, yeah. A good that's question. what we're they, supposed to help them do. Exactly. Some of them are stuck there and they need to help to go to the light. Do you guys help yeah. people go to the light? Yeah, I do. <laughs> like on medium and um, ghost. Yeah, I do. Yes, I do. A lot of them don't. Some of them don't know they're dead. Some of some of it's not even. Um, some of it's just res- residual energy, you know, and even with that, um, if you keep feeding it negativity, it grows, you know? So. I mean, come on, but, but Trish got a point. I mean, you get all, all these paranormal groups going into places and I can guarantee it. They're yelling and screaming and calling every name in the book at yeah. these spirits just to get a reaction. Well, basically at the Moundsville penitentiary, you don't, you think these guys are all miserable they're all in prison. They died there. They're going to be mad. They're going to be angry. They're not going to be happy ghosts. They're going to be mean, miserable. What if they're all just There's actually putting on a show? Like, what if, uh, you, what do you mean? What if, what if all like, these spirits know they're dead, know the people are coming, and then yeah, they, yeah. being a mess? Unless they're doing the it, for, it. Maybe they're doing it for fun. We don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows, Jen. But oh, there yeah, is not one all place. Are, you know, there is one place, though, Prospect Place, down in Trimway, Ohio. The money that they get from the paranormal groups going in to investigate, they took this 1902 mansion, I think it was the year, and they rebuilt it. Well, that's nice. Uh, yeah, so they yeah. used the money for good. <clears throat> that's good. And that transmutes the energy mm-hmm. there. That that creates, that raises the vibration. So does, you know, like planting flowers and, and stuff. Because it's not just the especially with prisons and, and asylums and stuff, it's not just the spirits there. It's also the building itself, the mm-hmm. land, everything, you know, everything has energy. So if you think of a building, most people, would, a lot of people would say, oh, no, that's that's ridiculous. You know, an actual building cannot haunt something. But that's not true because a lot of buildings are made out of wood. Wood is a living thing or yeah. was. It has a spirit. So well, it's, most uh, of the shows, Trish, they're, they're all for the money because that's all that's entertainment. That's how they make, 
you know, that's exactly all those exactly. paranormal shows, you know, are all in it for the money, like anything else, like Elon Musk and his, his gut leads us to our next topic. Um, <laughs> um, he, what was he? He said that he is, that's why I, I didn't understand what we were talking about. Yeah. I was listening to that YouTube video where he said that he was warning um, about a, I in artificial intelligence. What if he was warning? If he warns us against it, why is he making a chip? Why did he make a chip? Basically, it turns the human body into an AI. Trish, did you? I did you? Think, yes, and and that's one I had never. You know, I I don't watch the news or TV or anything ninety nine percent of the time. Um, but this one. Um, and this is just in the last like year or so he started changing his perspective, I guess. I mean, I, I wasn't familiar with the things he had done before. Um, but he said artificial intelligence can elicit the next world war and would come out to dominate the world um, in one interview. And that was just, uh, that was a year ago. And then he also warned in 2020 um, that AI will soon become just as smart as humans and said that when it does, we should all be scared because so I agree that, you know, we AI helps us and why this came up, it, it is it does help us a lot as far as in, in machinery and, and things like that. I don't think that we should ever create something AI in comparison to humans like, you know, like an actual robot, because that's just of course it's going to take <laughs> Like, well, he he, he he invented that. Uh, what's it called? It's called a a neural link that goes into your brain. Yep, and it's like a chip. Well, isn't that just turning? Isn't that turning human Terminator. beings into something? Yeah, like, and it, yeah, exactly. exactly. It was to basically exactly. to, uh, to upload knowledge what? and. Well, you gotta and, you gotta think about it. There's a certain point, you know, where you're gonna, where else are you gonna make money with this stuff than to start into the AI and production, yeah, but right? he prefer, but he he argued and said it's not good and warns us. No, because because it, it it will. So especially interdimensional things. Even if you relate this to extraterrestrials, who obviously can possess a lot, anything. They can possess cars and, and any type of electronics, your phone, your computers, things like that. So when you get a body for one, what do you think it's going to do? I mean, seriously, like, and, and then something that, especially something that's highly intelligent. But what yeah. also, I was, I was thinking about with the Olympics recently, they're showing how all of the athletes, the place they're staying they when they go to the cafeteria or whatever, their food comes down from the ceiling. A robot makes it, and it's delivered by a, a machine. Cheap There's no labor. Well, we're never going to have. Nobody wants to work. That's yeah, nice. that's all that's going to happen. There's not going to be enough. There's. <laughs> but that's another thing. Then the ones that do, where do you? Where are people going to? I mean, yeah, nobody wants to work. No one's going to want to leave their house because they'll be connected to like a uh, artificial intelligence, and you can say, oh, "I, I want to go to the beach." Okay, guys, I'm going to go to the beach right now. And I put this thing on my head, and you never have to and, leave. House. And not it's only getting that, there. I was on the highway next to, um, and I don't. I mean, I know we're gonna get, people are going to comment on this about it, but I was next to the high or on the highway when they had all, all the trucks that are automated oh, semi yeah. tractor trailers driving up from Texas or whatever. We're going to the majority. That's the scariest thing. If you're See, driving you know next to one of those. That's scary as hell. And there it's is the no new final driving. destination. That's all it is. You're like, holy hell, this is like Transformers, right? I mean, it's, it's, and there were, they were all in a row, you know? So, um, how do those determine? I, I mean, they've already come out with problems with Tesla being, you know, people suing Tesla because there's, their car didn't stop in time because they were taking a nap, you know? What, oh my God. Like, at what point <laughs> are these things yes, regulated? Uh... Yeah, Elon is just another tech fetish. Forgive me for saying so, but I've met a lot of them over the years. Been a sci-fi author since 1986. Tesla should have a model called the Siesta. The so you're gonna get a Tesla. Justin, Siesta. if you've been a your sci-fi author, you have to come on the show. We'll have to talk sci-fi. No, just no. in case. Just in oh, case. I was gonna yeah, just in case. I like that name. Just in case of what? <laughs> 
You need shorns. <laughs> He's good. But I think I think his opinion has changed over the years because um Oh, there's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's yeah. Given. Fair warning because it's obviously can cause some dangerous consequences. Well, yeah, it can because you we're all oh, it's like one of those creepy movies from a Mad Max. It doesn't get a point since he gave his warning. And now he's able to make money off of it because yes, people again. make their own choices. Exactly, exactly. He yeah. So no matter what happens, he'll be have a clean conscience. Yeah. So Nina brought up some great points right there. Uh, okay, it's time for off topic. Sean, what's your off topic? Uh, my off topic, I watched a show um, on um, Net, um, Discovery Plus, and it was about vampires in America. Oh. Yeah, it happened to deal with hot, hot in Arizona. There's these two guys were called out because a lot of these cattle were having mutilations. There's a lot of cattle mutilations. So it's the vampires that are doing it. <laughs> yeah. Are you watching and, Supernatural again? And I so, no, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link to it. And um, no, I, I believe you. I, I recollect you. an episode. And, there, and then these two like are going and interviewing different people. And um, they find the nest at an old trucking place. And they're showing, it, it was so fucking. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, yeah. Joe. We're done. Oh, oh, we're going to oh, get oh, I don't understand. Is there, my question to you all. Is there vampires in America? Oh, yes. hell yeah. I'm a vampire. Oh. No, no, I'm talking. Do you yeah. feed off of blood? No, I feed off of your soul. <laughs> Did you ever see the documentary about the, uh, there's a group of people that uh, follow by all the vampires and actually, you know, have their own there's ceremonies and drink blood and stuff. Yeah, they take it very seriously. And, and they're actually some of the nicest people that, you know, you could ever meet from my understanding. You know, from watching it and everything, and they put is, a lot into their community. Is this is this the TikTok couple that go on TikTok and they think that they claim they're vampires? Mm -hmm. No, um, there's nothing from TikTok. Trust me. You, okay. There's two different. So there's different kinds. Like I agree with with Jason. There's you know, there's the ones that have an entire process of. Um, from my understanding, the, obviously the people they they obtain their blood from are 100 like tested and all this stuff there's a there's an entire process to it and then there's the ones oh, there's like underground serious. especially right there's and underground the, clubs in cities yeah, where there's, there's according, vampires. according to the show though honestly according to the show and they say it that I a lot of homeless this. people were missing well, there yeah, you go james the nova the new orleans vampire well, there you go because look the, it up the homeless Those are some people, people are missing because the nova team are going around sucking their blood no, negative. That's not true. <laughs> Joe, where are you? <laughs> okay, yeah. Jason, what's your off topic for tonight? Well, since we had Valentine's Day yesterday, what about the actual Valentine's Day nas massacre, massacre in yeah. 1929? There you go. Mm -hmm. Was it uh, the north, north side of Chicago gang members? There were seven of them. They got shot from a south the southern i forget what mall boss they said may have been related but they'd never been able to prove it but what really caught me was these mob guys were so loyal to what they did one of the guys that got shot was still alive by the time the police got there and they asked him who did this and he told them nobody he said nobody did this that's how loyal they're loyal the, gang the members mafia guys and gang guys were you know, back then, and you know, sort of like Yellowstone, right? <laughs> so I was like, "Wow, I mean, that, that just kind of hits different," you know. Yeah, really. You know, yeah. Where's our loyalty today? You know, out there. Yeah, there, there isn't there. any loyalty. There's no there. loyalty at all. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. Trisha, you're off topic. Oh gosh, I had two on topics. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, why don't we ask Mr. Predictor? <laughs> oh God! Here comes oh, the flea market. Goodness. Here, here it comes. So that that can be an off topic. Did you get that from Trader Jacks? No, Trisha, <laughs> go ahead. What do you want well, to ask? Mr. Well, yesterday, um, at my job, somebody came up to me with it. It was very strange, and with an eight ball, like like a pool ball, um, and said, "This this eight ball's got a big chip out of it." 
do you consider that unlucky? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that is unlucky. It has a, yeah, definitely. That's, that's funny. Okay. You brought that up. Trisha, want to ask Mr. Projector a question? <laughs> I, I have a question for it. I have a question for it. Okay. Mr. Predictor Flea Market a Magic 8 Ball that was picked up for 50 cents. Is Jenny <laughs> going to get bit by a vampire? Good question. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Yes? Definitely yes. <laughs> there you go. Sean, do you have a question for Mr. Predictor? Uh, I'll let mine slide for this month. Nah. Oh, come on, Sean. Okay, am I going to lose more weight? <laughs> I think we know. There is no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a great one. Trisha's turn. Uh, Trisha, would you like me? Jenny, do you have a question for me? No. Will Tris get married? <laughs> it is a certainty. <laughs> there you oh, go. God. <laughs> Why? Why would I do that again? <laughs> Will Jason hit the lottery? Hell no. Possibility. There you go, Jason. That's a possibility. You'll get like a five dollar. You'll, you'll get a five dollar. It'll be like off. a two dollar scratch off. Hey, right. I like that ball. That's better than the other one that I can't see. I have an off topic. What? Oh. I am reading dogs that know when their owners are coming home. Can you see that? Yeah. Is it they are the dog? best alarm clocks and. Yeah, just... um, and other unexplained powers of animals. Well, I'm gonna tell you a little story that happened to my son who lost his kitty, his beloved kitty, for he's had him for like 15 years. Well, he passed away, they had to put their their kitty to his kitty to sleep because it was so sick. Well, he, you know, how people grieve their animals. Well, he for some reason he decided to go to Animal Friends. And there's a kitty there that says on the little tag, very shy. It doesn't like anybody. My son goes into um, the animal friends and he, he sees the kitty and the kitty was sleeping. And he just went like this on his head, knocked on his head, wake him up. And the cat jumped, got up, was so excited, got up and he jumped on his shoulder. Hmm. Just like his other cat that passed away. Oh, Isn't wow. that weird? And he's acting like like the like, same the cat that passed away. Isn't that crazy? Not at all. That he's he's doing everything that this other cat did. You know, my uh I can relate to that story and have a couple things. Uh one is my mom's one dog uh took on a lot of like the personalities, I guess for per se, as her favorite dog the past a couple years ago which is uh, really fascinating. And also uh, our dogs, no matter what route we take or anything, my wife just told me is I forgot about there for a minute, but they always know when we're going to grandma's house and they get worked up. Like we could take them anywhere. They'll be fine and calm in the car, but we could take separate routes to grandma's house every single time. And they just know where we're going and start getting all wild in the car and jumping everywhere. And it's just something else. How animals, they just know. Mm -hmm. It's like, how does it, I mean, do you think, what do you think is going on with the, with the cat though? Is it, is it possible that the cat can go jump bodies or it souls? Reincarnate. Or spirit, reincarnation. Yeah, spirit, yeah, reincarnate. yeah, why not? But can why they not? do that with a living cat? cat? Yes. Like, yes. How? Well, what people, happens? You know, people what can happens? get possessed and stuff. Anybody, you know, it could happen to anything. It's just energy. You so know, what do you think happens to the other cat? That was real shy. Is it just put in his someplace else in its soul, or do they have a soul? Yeah, they just oh. lock it up in a in a uh, foot locker and put a padlock on it, and then so, the new one takes over. Jack. But they say they say our souls <laughs> can be in multiple places um, at one time, you know. So there, there is a way they, especially even with living. I mean, not just somebody who's who's passed on. Uh, I mean, so it's, I just too, it's just too strange. I mean, it's, 
It's like the cat is like the same cat. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it's, I mean, like, it's highly, po- you know, they say everything happens for a reason, you know, the, you know, uh, the kitty passing and then, you know, he happened to go to that place per- in particular and, you know, this one particular cat, you know, it's just weird. Everything happens for reasons and it could be spiritual or it could just been meant to be. Yeah. I think it's, you think it's that cat? I mean, I, there's a picture I'm trying to find. It's just too strange that it's the same. It's the same. They do the same thing. I mean, the way he took the picture, there was two, like he's sitting on his shoulder, and it looks just like the other cat. It's weird. It's just really cool. But, but we, I mean, it, go ahead, Trish. Everything also repeats itself. So, because I noticed, like, I um, adopted my cat that that actually decided to stay with my parents now because they live in the country um, on, it was February 13th, um, like, I mean, a long time, like seven years ago or something. And then just recently, um, you know, coming up on certain years, I repeat these same patterns. So I just adopted Thor, you know, recently. So can you see that? You see how the cat's doing this? The one on the bottom is the deceased cat, and the one on top is the brand new cat. Oh, don't but say that. Do that the, looks like my cat. <laughs> they do the same thing. It's weird. Um, <sighs> like your cat. Your cat's not going anywhere. Don't worry. <clears throat> well, I mean, the one with my parents. She's she's getting. Uh, she's pretty. Well, I mean, she's not that old. She's like eight years old now, maybe. That's um, a baby for a kitty. Yeah, but she she does. Um, stay outside and inside and there's you know there's a lot outside there in the country so speaking of cats uh i remember years ago it was probably eight or nine years ago now uh my dad was living by himself and uh he's always had a cat well he didn't this is after i moved out and stuff and uh he didn't have a cat anymore so the wife and i we uh we went we adopted a cat that kind of reminded me of one he had when i was a kid named shenzi it was like an orange tabby so we adopt, adopt this cat his name was julius and uh we just dropped him off like my dad wasn't home i had a key opened the door set to, we got a box and litter and all that stuff sit in there and just left so it was like a surprise surprise well the cat was like real anxious he had bad anxiety and didn't take to him very well and it was coming up on Christmas time, and uh, I remember my dad told the cat, he said, if you don't warm up to me by Christmas, then you're going to have to go. And believe it or not, Christmas Day, the cat actually just come out, jumped up on his lap, curled up, and just started purring Aww. on Christmas Day. So that was kind of uh, that was kind of cool because he told me, he's like, this cat, it's clawing everything. He's beating me up. <laughs> it's just not working out. You know, I appreciate it, blah blah blah. And then you know, he told me what happened on Christmas Day. I was like, well, that's uh, that's pretty interesting there. Yeah, you know, that's really interesting. <laughs> Cat animals are animals are. What's that show on for the five? Am animals are great. <laughs> you know, on the five. Great. Most my people like their animals great. more than other people. Hell that's yeah, true. I like my dog better than a lot of human beings. I like pe- I like people like my tea in a bag and underwater. Oh my god! <laughs> I oh, Mister Grumpy, I saw that. Grumpy somebody else came up with tonight, that. Huh? I forget who it was, or I'd give him credit for it. That was a good one. That's Mister Grumpy Pumpy over there tonight. I'm gonna send you this goth tea infuser. It's hilarious. It hangs at you. You'll <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and the animals are telepathic. Of course. They yes. Are. So my kitten that broke her leg this weekend, um, it's ironic because she's the one that saved my parents, their, their cat, um, not, not the one of mine that stayed with it. So they have two technically mine, which they still call mine. And then, and then another one, but the kitten is the one that I adopted like a month after Thor and I wasn't planning on keeping her, but she's, she was crawling, you know, on the floor of, of my car and, when I was getting out, when I came back home and I was going to take her to the Humane Society, um, cause I figured, you know, somebody would adopt her right away cause she was really young. Um, and she had this sticker stuck to her, like a, a sticker sticker that said, please don't regift me. And I'm like, <laughs> no. okay, universe. Like, <laughs> yep. so, 
but she just she broke her she she rescued my parents she left her mother and rescued my parents cat she it, he was laying in a like in a gutter and it looked like he'd been there a few days and his back um left leg was was broken or injured really bad and and they've ended up making him like a house cat now and stuff um nursed him back to health and everything and um he turns out he he's her brother but like from another litter i guess she she went and found my son to go like she went and she left her mom to go find a human and led him back to my parents cat well she just broke her leg this last weekend and it's the opposite side in the same place Oh, hmm. so that's strange. Poor kitty. Yeah, right. So uh, Mr. Crowley here said, you know, he was talking about uh, where he read a story where your cat would kill you if they could. So Mr. Crowley, I have to agree with you. I've heard throughout my whole life. If cats were about 150 pounds heavier, we would all be dead. Cats are <laughs> crazy. Some down. of them. They're I probably way cat. more intelligent than us. There's some of them are little bastards. They kick like <laughs> kick your feet over the bed. Like, do you ever like they... wake up and your cat was just staring at you and you're like, Yeah, they're like sucking your breath. <laughs> I would be mauled to death in my sleep. Well, or if you put your feet over the bed and your bare feet, and you know, the cat goes and tacks it. Psychopath. Mine used to do that. Yeah, I got a friend, I got a friend of mine. Their, their cat's pretty cool and uh if you sit there and like you put your hand over the edge of the couch, she'll just come up and just start yeah. swatting the crap. It's like yeah. if that cat, if that cat was about 150, 200 pounds, like I wouldn't be going over there. I'd be scared to death. It's going to beat me up. You know what I mean? Animals are great. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They do. They do ward off evil spirits, though. So I want to take Thor with me to like the next. Um, <laughs> well, because they're good communicators with them too. So. Um, I want to take him with me to the next like cemetery I go to or whatever. Yeah, you see Maybe tonight. Cool. It's full moon. <laughs> hey, mate, when you do that, Trish, when you do that, film it. You see, I'd like to see how the cat reacts yeah. in the cemetery. I really do. I, I, you know, I wanted to do that at the Sally House when I went there because there were I actually saw cat spirits there. So before I went there, I was I I just kept getting this that I should take Thor, and that's probably why you know they'd they'd probably be able right. to communicate easier with him. That's possible. Well, Thor would probably be all over the place looking like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he does over. that. He does that now. He does that in my house. He'll be chasing yeah. stuff all, all over the house. Little, That's nothing. Else... <laughs> well, so what's your I mean, show? I see them. Nobody else can. What's, what's your that? show? What's your show tonight, John? Uh, my show tonight. Um, Do your tonight. meditation again. I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> Was it that bad, my man? No, I went to sleep. You put you, you to... should hear what she said about it before you got on here. Big liar. No, no I don't um, know. There's, uh, I, I just don't like the way people are in the world today. So I'm going to talk about um, how you hate two people. movies, <laughs> two movies, uh, Christmas movies, uh, A Christmas Carol, and It's a Wonderful Life. I'm going to talk about those. What about Santa Slay? No, no. What I about movie? Well, I'm coming. tired of people being mean. Sean, why don't you talk about like you're coming up to um, St. Patrick's Day coming up? Why don't you talk about some kind of leprechaun story? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm chasing a leprechaun. Little green I'm man out. chasing I, you around with a pitchfork. <laughs> I, I am chasing a leprechaun right now, and I will be posting it on TikTok. What do you mean soon. you're chasing a leprechaun? They say leprechauns, there's gold. And Okay, where, where's this leprechaun? I want to meet him. Oh, don't worry. You'll meet him. Go to the grocery store in the cereal aisle and you'll find no, him. No, 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 no. He's about this tall. He, yeah. Where, is my, where can I find this guy at? I want to watch him. You where's he at? I want to get to grab him. his. I want his pot of gold. I want to be. I'm telling him you, I'm going to be posting all my okay. movements on TikTok. Oh, so. right. I'm going to listen. All right. Good. <laughs> I'm not. All oh, right, no, you're not. we're going to check on out, guys. So thanks for tuning in to Chasing Prophecy. See you next week. Thank you for listening to Torture Thank Tuesday. You. Good night. Good night.